My journey uh, from being a high school dropout to being a Harvard professor is, I think, an interesting one. You know, I struggled uh, in school to the point of, like, not just dropping out, but they kicked me out because uh, I had a 0 0.9 GPA. Um, and it was the start of my senior year, and they said, you know, you can't graduate, so um, you need to leave. And um, shortly thereafter, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, who's still my wife today, uh, found out she was pregnant. And so we started a family at, uh, really young, and by the time I was in my, uh, like, 20, 21, we had two kids. I was working minimum wage jobs, and uh, we were relying on welfare to get by. I, I, this is just a tough life, and I, I, I knew I had to do something different. My dad actually gave me what turned out to be like the most important advice of my life, which is, you know, people were watching me um, go from job to job to job and they thought, you know, maybe I'm just lazy, I need to buckle down and do the work. But he said, you know, I don't think you're lazy, I, I just think you need to be motivated all the time. Um, and on the advice of my father, I actually decided I was going to go back to school. So I got a GED. Um, and I enrolled at Weber State University uh, in Ogden, Utah, which is just an open enrollment uh, school I went at night. In my case, um, I had gone back to college. You know, I'm working during the day um, and trying to get my sea legs, right, in terms of uh, what, this idea of being able to do okay in school. Um, and uh, my family had scraped together what money they had, and it was enough that would cover one year of tuition. And they said, basically, you need to get an academic scholarship or you won't be able to continue. So um, I was like, I want to be in this honors program. If I could get in there, I feel like that would be a great fit for me. And the, the director, when I went into his office, he said, okay, well, what are your, you know, we took the ACTs where I grew up, you know, but well, the ACT scores, they were terrible. And he said, okay, well, yeah, you definitely don't qualify for that. He said, well, what was your high school GPA? And, definitely didn't qualify for that and he said look I, I'll let you in for one class and if you do really well and the professor says you are really contributing to the class then I'll let you take a second one and we'll just go from there um, and once I got into that program the, the fit to who I am so even though I had no real study skills I had a lot of holes in my understanding it was such a good fit for my individuality that I really did thrive and um, flash forward I actually graduated as, as the honor student of the year at Weber State Through this process, I uh, actually figured out that, you know, once I learned enough about myself, who I was, my own individuality, I was able to make things work in a way that didn't before. Um, I graduated there, the top of my class, um, and actually got into Harvard for my doctorate. my work there where I work on the science of the individual stuff and then once I graduated there I um, did a postdoc at the Center for Astrophysics and then came back to Harvard as a professor. One of the hard things about being a high school dropout uh, with a family is that um, there's just no money. The thing that I regret the most is I, I always felt like there wasn't time or the ability or have money to invest, right? And the the thing I wished and I just didn't take advantage of it is the probably my only regret is that I didn't get the luxury of compound interest <laughs> over time, right? The ability to even put a little bit away, even when things are tough. Um, because of what it buys you on the back end. And I never ever forgot that and I realized that like part of, um, part of investing is at first 
if you're digging yourself into a hole, right? <laughs> like all the investing in the world isn't gonna save you from the hole you're digging for yourself. So being able to put things in place, that's what I was focused on, getting myself into a stable position where I could be smart about the way I spent money um, before I could think about how I invested it. I realized that I only, I would not have credit cards. I only had a debit card so that if I did make an impulsive purchase, I immediately felt the pain, right? I knew that like, okay, well the money's gone now, right? Versus someday I have to pay for it. Um, as I progressed, you know, and as I had more money, then you start to realize well, I can look forward and I can apply some of those same principles. Invest in you. Ready, set, grow. CNBC and Acorns.